So we move to our sixth meditation for this year. And Patricia Rook, my colleague at Water, will be uh, leading us on a bold journey to self-love. A bold journey to self-love. And I'm delighted that she will do that. Remember that last month, Adrian Corti shared with us Hildegard of Bingen, Veritas, mm -hmm. Aging in the Living Forest of Creation, for what was, I found, a very informative and meaningful session. And you can go on our website at www.waterwomensalliance.org and find it under meditations. Mm -hmm. It was a marvelous piece of work, um, really. So let us begin um, first by muting our phones. Everybody mute your phone except for Patricia. Uh, Patrice and I will keep ours open, um, but others will please mute your phone so we get a good clear line. And let us begin as we always do with a land acknowledgement. We do this to remind ourselves of, of what we do and why we do it, given the systemic injustice that indigenous people and other people of color face in this country. We at Water are on indigenous land in Silver Spring, Maryland. This is the traditional and contemporary land of the Piscataway and Anacostan peoples. We acknowledge their trauma and the injustices toward them and other indigenous people that is so deep in US culture and history. We join in efforts to eradicate these forms of injustice and to make reparations for the genocide involved. Waters work is aimed to bring about social justice. Please take a moment with me to consider the native people on whose land you have the privilege to sit this day. Thank you. I'd like to welcome, especially those of you who are new tonight. This is a monthly gathering of uh, the water meditation circle, as it were. And um, some of us come all the time. Some of us come when we can get here. Some of us are new. Some of us come and never come back. So it's a, it's a wide range. Um, what we do is someone offers seven or eight minutes of uh, input to spark our contemplative practice. And then we simply sit for 22 minutes in silence together. And the way it works is that when the person finishes and we begin the silence, I will ring the gong, which I hope you can hear. Let us then um, proceed. We'll spend 22 minutes after you hear that gong and then we'll open the floor for conversation. Um, feel free to turn off your video during the uh, period of time when we're uh, in meditation. And Patrice has uh, very kindly brought us an image that will be on the screen if that helps you as well. Meditate as you will. There is no cookie cutter approach. We do not teach people simply inviting you to follow your breath. If that helps, if you have a mantra that you use, focus on that. If you have some other practice of breathing that helps you get in touch with where you need to be for your own contemplative space, feel free to do that. So with phones muted and I will mute mine very shortly. I would like to introduce uh, Patrice Rupp, who is a student at the University of Heidelberg in Germany, where she is uh, when she's not at water. And this year, happily, she is with us through the Brethren Volunteer Program that partners with a German group called IRENE. And that program sends German students to join with uh, US people and others. All They actually serve all over the world, don't they, Patrice? But in this case, to come to be part of the um, Brethren Volunteer Program. And Patrice just turned 21 this weekend, so we congratulate her on um, being a legal person in the world. Uh, and she just got back from a trip to New York City and the Delaware beaches with her mother and father and brother who came from Baden-Württemberg in Germany and enjoyed uh, time together in this very wild country we call the United States. Patrice is interested in sociology and psychology. She's a trained volunteer firefighter and she loves to play games and she loves to seek out new adventures. She's a great collaborator in the office, right up in the top echelon of water volunteers. And she adds a lot of good energy wherever she goes. So I think it probably flows from her abundant self-love. That's just a guess. Patrice, it's your turn. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. So I have chosen the topic of self-love because it simply addresses everybody. It doesn't matter where you're from, from all over the world and in every stage of life. But before we start, what exactly is self-love and what does it mean to you? I will read a definition that I personally like very much. Self-love is a state of accept appreciation for oneself that grows from actions that support our physical, psychological and spiritual growth. Self-love 
means having a high regard for your own well-being and happiness. Self-love means taking care of your own needs and not sacrificing your well-being to please others. I love this de definition because it just simply shows how important self-love is for everybody in our daily life and for our daily happiness. And since self-love is so important for all of us, I ask myself the question, why do we all struggle with it? Why is it so hard to accept self-love? And why is it indeed such a bold journey? And in order to answer the question, I did some research on self-love and I started by Googling synonyms for that word. And what I found actually kind of shocked me because the first word that I found was individualistic, which is so far so good. But then it got kind of interesting because the second word is narcissistic, followed by self-absorbed, self-centered, selfish, egoistic, and arrogant. And these are the official words that Google gives you when you enter synonyms for self-love. And I was very shocked because these are all very negative words. And that kind of lets me believe that self-love is still a very sensitive concept and term in the eyes of our society, that it has some vulnerability to it. And um, I also believe that society, on the one hand, we're expected to be confident, but not too confident. Because I feel like often I experience in my life that when I try to be confident, I had the fear that people would mistake me for being arrogant. And that's simply not true. And I want to ask you, how do you experience self-love in your daily life? And were you ever in a situation where you kind of took yourself back and tried to appear not as confident because you were scared that people would mistake you for being arrogant? I believe these negative synonyms that I just read are the reason why the journey towards self-love is indeed a bold journey. And I mean, selfishness and arrogancy, these are all very negative words. And I don't want people to believe that I'm arrogant or selfish, and I think nobody wants to. And since self-love has this negative connection to these words, I believe that's where the vulner vulnerability comes from, because we know we need it to be happy we also know it's connected to these words. So we're kind of careful in dealing with this word. But I think that's a mistake. Because these synonyms like arrogancy and selfishness, yes, they have a negative touch. But are they really bad, though? Because when we read the definition again, it said, self-love means taking care of your own needs and not sacrifice your well-being for other people. And I believe that to not sacrifice your well-being for others, you have to say no. And to be able to say no, you sometimes just simply have to be selfish. It's a selfish act, but not in a negative way, because you need to, you have to, in order to be happy. And it's necessary. So I believe, yes, these negative words have a connection to self-love, but in a positive way. And of course, being arrogant is a problem if you are it in a very large amount. But I think a small amount of selfishness and arrogancy is important to be able to take care of your needs and to say no to other people when you have a feeling that they're not really helpful in your life or that you're kind of overstepping your limits. Um, so I believe being selfish is part of the journey, journey to self-love. And otherwise, it probably wouldn't be a bold journey, right? And this was one of the many challenges that we face, I believe, when it comes to self-love. And of course, it's a very sensitive topic and it's very individual, individual. So there are many, many other things and personal things that people might think about when it comes to this topic. It's very large and I can't talk about every aspect. So I would like to use the remaining time to show you five techniques you can use to develop self-love or to increase your self-love. And the first one is 
Actually, my favorite one is to talk to yourself as you would talk with a friend. Because I know there are lots of writers among us. Just imagine you just wrote a text that you really don't like. And then sometimes I was in the position that I questioned my entire writing skill just because of that one text. But if a friend would come to you with that problem, they wouldn't just say, yeah, that bad, that text is bad and you probably aren't a good writer. They would say, you know, that text isn't your best one, but I know that you're a good writer and it probably just wasn't the right time or the right topic. And that's a really good advice, an advice that you probably, probably wouldn't give yourself but that you need to hear and that you deserve to hear from yourself. So sometimes taking a step back and watching your work through the eyes of a friend can help you. Another technique is to give yourself compliments and you have to speak them. You have to say them, you have to hear them because that makes the difference. And the third point is to take care of your body's needs because your body is connected to your happiness. So just make sure that you have enough food and water, sleep and rest for the day. Also, check in with your emotions. And it can be helpful to keep track of them every day by just simply writing down how you're feeling. The last thing is a bit basic, but I think it's very important in order to kind of keep track of our own happiness. Um, to simply make a list of all the positive things about you. And here's the important thing. When you're done with that list, don't throw it away. because as your journey towards self-love continues, you might be able to add more things. You probably will be. These are five tips that I have for you. And now I would like to inspire you to think about what self-love means to you and how is it in your life? Were you ever at a point where you struggled? I actually was, and I think we all were. And what did you do to get out of it? Have you developed some techniques that kind of helps you to develop self-love? And what are they? So I think it's a very important topic. And I found a quote from Hildegard of Bingen, because I know we all love her, that sums that topic up in a very creative and nice way. So I would just read the quote to you. Um, all right. Dare to declare who you are. It is not far from the shores of silence to the boundaries of speech. The path is not long, but the way is steep. You must not only walk there, you must be prepared to leap. Thank you so much, Patrice. I hope we're prepared to leap now into our contemplative silence. Mm -hmm. Welcome back everyone and thank you for being part of our meditation this evening. Special thanks to you Patrice for um, a very provocative and uh, meaningful introduction for us to think about things in a new way and hopefully to emerge with the kind of self-love you describe. 